A new medical device shows promise eliminating one of the most frustrating parts of breast cancer surgery, the need for second operations to remove lingering cancer cells. Joining us now to discuss this new tool is WSJ senior special writer Lucette Lagnado and Dr. Alice Police, a breast cancer surgeon at the University of California at Irvine. Welcome, ladies. So glad to have both of you here. Lucette, let me start with you. This device is called the Margin Probe. It comes from doctors in Israel, correct? Right. And tell us how it works exactly. Well, what's fascinating is it's a handheld device. Uh, think of it as the size of a thick electric toothbrush or a big pen. And what the uh, doctor does during the surgery, after they've removed the tumor with extra tissue, they use it, they kind of run it all over the different surfaces, and it starts beeping if it spots any uh, cancer case. cells. Oh, okay, so and indicating what else might need to be taken. Exactly, oh. and then the surgeon then and there mm -hmm. goes back and we have a surgeon on the line. Yes, we do, Dr. Police, you, I understand you use the margin probe. Can you tell us what kinds of results you're seeing with it? Sure, I use margin probe for all my lumpectomy cases and it's, it's been a wonderful thing. It's a huge patient pleaser and it's lowered my personal re-excision rate from around 13 to 15 percent to down to around three percent. That's incredible. Can you explain yes. to us what clean margins are and why surgeons such as yourself strive for them after breast cancer operations? Well, it's, it's, we don't just strive for them. Actually, for a lumpectomy, it's absolutely essential to have no tumor, uh, no tumor on the surface of the specimen after we take it out. And so there's really no other device or no other method in the world today that allows us to, in real time in the operating room, evaluate the margins of a lumpectomy specimen to make sure the tumor is gone. And nothing's perfect, but this device has able, enabled me to lower my personal re-excision rate down to about 3%. When you say which, nothing's perfect, are you alluding to the number of false positives that it can sometimes indicate? Um, probably that's one thing. Mm -hmm. the, the biggest problem with margin probe is the inability to get, uh, to get it paid for, and that's stopping a lot of surgeons from using it. Right. But overall, we know that the routine use of margin probe will lower your re-excision rate substantially, and that's a conversation I just hate to have with a patient. It's the most difficult conversation that that there is in medicine, aside from telling a patient they have cancer in the first place. Well, of course. Now, we're going to get to the economics of this in just a yeah. second, but I want to revisit this question of, of the second operation, Lucette. In your yeah. reporting, how traumatic did you find this to be, not just personally, but also, you know, financially? Tanya, it's such a nightmare, and it's so outrageous when you consider in 2017 that the second operation rates are as high as 20 to 30 percent, and in fact, the Mayo Clinic told me they could even be higher. They could be 50%. In other words, this poor woman goes in to have a lumpectomy. Which is already a traumatic experience. Exactly. She's freaked out. Mm -hmm. She gets out of the surgery and wonders, did they get it all out? And then the surgeon calls her some days later and says, you know, really sorry, Ms. Jones, but we have to go in there again. And what is also, I guess, what's a little upsetting when you hear about that mm -hmm. is the fact that there is a sort of a reverse incentive in many cases to do the second surgery because the hospitals get reimbursed for it. Is that right? It's terribly perverse. And Dr. Police can speak about it as she's been very candid. But basically, the, the hospitals know that they're going to get money for a second operation, mm -hmm. whereas for... T uh, technology like the margin probe, which costs a thousand dollars a pop, they're not going to get reimbursed generally. So, right. So, Dr. Police, how do you get around that? Because it costs a thousand dollars, and that cost is obviously passed on to the patient. It's not covered by their insurance. Is this then something that many patients who want to to use it cannot use it because they can't afford it? Um, that's exactly correct. And I think it's it's hard to know, but I think we're getting reimbursed in about one third of the cases by using an unlisted CPT code. Mm -hmm. But you really, in order to get reimbursed these days, you have to have a CPT code. And that's extremely political and extremely hard to get. And once again, there's not a big financial incentive in our fee-for-service healthcare system to make that happen. Right. The financial incentive would favor not using margin probe. And to answer your, uh, your false positives question, 
Um, there are a few false positives, and I actually uh, did a paper on that, false positives in dense breasts, which is where you have the most problem. And if you look at that paper, it shows that the patients still benefit. Mm -hmm. You still lower your re-excision rate, and you find things you wouldn't otherwise find. So I don't see the false positives as a big problem in my practice at all. Right, so you're still a big advocate. Mm -hmm. but, but Tanya, I think the money is really incredible because... You know, it's very hard to know in our mysterious healthcare system how much a lumpectomy really costs. So I got numbers Perfect. all over the place, mm -hmm. 9,000, 11,000, 16,000, and probably a lot more than that, I suspect, a lot more. And, and I hate to say it because I'd like to think that our hospitals are really idealistic, but I'm not so sure. A lot of and so you're talking about a lot of money right. in any event to the system. It's incredible. And these re-excision rates, Dr. Police and other doctors can confirm, can be lowered. A lot of competing forces here, and unfortunately, the patient doesn't always come out ahead. Yeah. No, except a patient should learn to ask a new surgeon, what is your re-excision rate, please? Good point. Good point. Maybe that's the, that's the, uh, the end result here. Lucette and Dr. Police, thanks to both of you for joining us today. You're very welcome. Thank you.